Next, let's discuss how Inoslate works. Each view of Inoslate is building and updating a LML model in your current project's database behind the scenes while you are creating and editing diagrams, documents, and more. Each view has access to and knows how to interpret that same model and displays it in a different way. For example here, if you use requirements view to develop a requirements document, then several other products can be automatically generated in Inoslate from the same model, including a hierarchy chart, system as requirements diagram, document tree diagram, hierarchical matrix, and the hierarchical comparison matrix. The underlying LML model being created is primarily comprised of seven classes of entities that form the basis of any system design. Requirement, artifact, action, asset, input output, conduit, and characteristic entities. Understanding these entities and their relationships is key to understanding Inoslate, as well as system architecting in general. So let's spend a little time talking about these seven main elements of our Inoslate design. The requirements class in Inoslate, when populated, contains requirements elements that constitute the actual system requirements. Examples of requirements are, the autonomous vehicle shall accept destination location from the user. That's an input requirement. And the sensors shall provide camera data to the control system. That's an output requirement. The input and output requirements are grouped into an artifact entity, such as a document. Next, we have to get some sense of what our system is going to do. To model the capability of our system, we use action entities to define a functional architecture. For instance, we might want to design a system to perform the action drive vehicle. However, once we decide what our system will do, we need to be able to implement the capability. The physical implementation of our architecture is comprised of physical elements, and these can be hardware, software, or even human elements. And in a slate, we call these asset entities. For example, an autonomous vehicle asset might be used to perform the action drive vehicle. In Inoslate, input-output entities are the primary form of communication between actions. In order for items to flow among the elements in our system, the components will need to communicate with each other through some type of connections. Thus, Inoslate defines conduit entities, and these transfer input-outputs. And finally, Inoslate includes characteristic entities to define key system metrics. These are the element definitions from the lifecycle modeling language specification. A requirement entity identifies a capability, characteristic, or quality factor of a system that must exist for the system to have value and utility to the user. An artifact entity specifies a document or other source of information that is referenced by or generated in the knowledge base. An action entity generates effects and may have preconditions before it can be executed. This action can include transforming inputs into outputs, the process by which inputs are transformed into outputs. An asset entity specifies an object, person, or organization that performs an action, such as a system, subsystem, component, or element. An input-output entity specifies the information, data, or object input to trigger, or output from an action entity. A conduit entity specifies that means for physical transporting input-output entities between asset entities. It has limitations of capability and latency. A characteristic entity specifies properties of an entity.